here. My name is Kevin Bruni. I'm the athletic director here at Grand Rapids Christian Middle School. It's my goal to try to get you informed of what's about to happen with athletics. We're coming out of summer, and so it's good to kind of get everybody in one place uh, on the same page. Uh, you got a chance to ask questions if you want to. You can type things in the chat, um, or you can just you know interrupt me and ask a question or wait till the end. It's kind of up to you how you want to do that, but uh, please use this time as a resource for you. My hope is to cover a lot of the questions that you're going to have. Um, but if you do have uh, some questions, please don't hesitate to, to reach out and ask, especially uh, at the end, okay? Or put them in the chat and we'll just check it as we go. So thank you for coming. My name is Kevin Bruni. Oh, nice. This is my 10th year um, as the athletic director here at Grand Rapids Christian Middle School. I also work at our high school, so you'll see me around uh, many of those events as well. Um, and so, uh, yeah, let's talk about soccer. Um, so we are, uh, I'd like to start with a prayer just to get us going though. So God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, meet with people uh, in busy lives and busy situations. We thank you for the time they've taken to um, try to connect and, and learn how they can best support Grandpa's Christian and support their child this season uh, through middle school athletics and soccer. Now, we're grateful for the opportunity to play, to represent you, uh, to represent Grand Rapids Christian, and we're thankful for the opportunities that we have. Bless us, help us to be a great community, one that puts you on display in a positive way, uh, winning or losing, challenging or success. Uh, we're grateful for um, the opportunity to be here. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, so, philosophy of athletics at Grand Rapids Christian Middle, we want everybody to participate. Um, we're glad you signed up. Everybody gets a chance to play, to learn, to grow, uh, to, to build skills, to be on a team, um, to gain some clarity on if they really like this sport or not. Uh, that's what middle school is about. Uh, and so we're excited to offer this to everybody. The coach's main goal, uh, based on that philosophy, is to teach students about the game, teach them the skills, teach them how to be a team, how to sacrifice for each other, how to build each other up. Uh, how to manage challenge and difficulty and also provide some challenge and difficulty to your son uh, in soccer. And also give them every opportunity to learn about themselves and the Lord in the classroom of athletics through, through um, soccer this year. Uh, so um, our school values Christ, community, and commitment. You've probably heard us talk about the three C's, but we're trying to learn everything we can about Christ through this thing that we're all interested in called soccer. And so our goal and our coach's goal is to help you develop, help your child develop their worldview of Christ through the game of soccer. And we're excited for that opportunity. Second, community means that we're better together. That means we don't fight each other. We don't uh, cheer against each other. We support each other. We work together. We respect each other. We give each other the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and we, we connect as a community. It's one of the things that makes our school um, more successful in so many ways than other schools that keep parents away or, or fight against their parents a lot. Our school just doesn't have an attitude of that. Our athletic program doesn't have an attitude of that. We have an attitude of connection and partnership between our coaches, our department, and our school. So that's community. And then commitment, we want to be committed to being the best that we can be at doing these first two things. Um, and so it's really important to us that we use athletics to, to talk about Christ, community, and commitment, just like the school is using, you know, the classroom to talk about Christ, community, and commitment. And so I just want to invite you into that process with us as well. Um, so our soccer program itself, um, we like to think of it as a 5 to 12 program, much more than like a fifth grade program or a middle school only program. But um what you need to know, some of you are coming from like pure play, which was like kindergarten to fourth grade where everything was equal and it wasn't real competitive. It was just kind of like, yay, we cheer and everybody gets an opportunity, which is great for that level. When we head to middle school, we kind of take a step towards what high school is like. High school is going to be cuts. It's going to be no equal playing time whatsoever. Uh, and if you can make it, you're, you're, you're fighting for a way to just be out on the field, you know? And so middle school is kind of the ground where we take you from everything's equal for everybody. It's kind of like, yay, cheering to competitive athletics. And so we try to step you up in that process. Um, so our coaches now are hired and uh, 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 supervised by me. Uh, we sometimes have some volunteers, but largely they're hired and supervised by me. Our kids play against other schools, not against our own school, like in pure play. 
Um, and we want to partner with our parents to, to make sure that we're doing competitive athletics well. For some of you, this is the first step you've had into competitive athletics. And when people get competitive in youth sports, sometimes even parents, we get a little crazy. And uh, we just got to work on that and acknowledge that we're not going to be like that. And we're going to be excited. We're going to be uh, happy for our kids. We're going to cheer for them. We're going to be sad with them. And all those things, we want to start partnering with you in this process of athletics. Um, it's very inclusive in nature for the middle school. Uh, we want everybody to play. There's no cuts in our entire middle school program, but we do want you to know that one big shift is that we don't do equal playing time anymore. Okay. Starting in fifth grade through eighth grade, we, we don't do equal playing time, like in peer play or in the elementary sports. And so that's a shift for some of you. Don't expect that, that everyone's going to get the same, like they're not. So one, here's one thing I know. I'm a parent as well of a middle school student. I want my son to play with the best players because when my son plays with the best player, my son has a better chance to find some success. So as a parent, I want my son to do that, right? That's a good thing. Um, but the problem is that everybody wants their child to play with the best player. And so that means the best players are going to be on the field more often. Uh, and I think we can all understand how that math works. But that's just a way that we're looking at it. Um, is that we're, we need to make sure that um, we understand that playing time is no longer equal. In fifth and sixth grade, it's going to be more equal than it would be in seventh and eighth, which is obviously more equal than it would be in high school. So again, we're trying to work on that stair-step program uh, of getting us closer to that next step. And we've got some time to do that. Um, we don't want to miss practice. When we were in pure play, it's kind of like hey, we got a little busy, couldn't make it to practice today. That's all right, right, coach. And every pure play coach is like, oh, yeah, no problem. When we're in competitive athletics, that's different. We don't miss practices, right? Kids go to practice. They stay for the whole practice. And then we pick them up and we bring them home. And they go to every game, right? Like we, That's part of what we're doing as we're taking this stair-step approach, okay? Um, and then time requirements for fifth and sixth grade, we're typically at three days a week, sometimes four, but almost always three days a week between games and practices. So if you have one game, you probably have two practices. If you have two games, probably have one practice, unless we get a weird spot in the schedule where it would look like maybe three games in a row or something before a practice, we might add a fourth day that week to get another practice in the middle. Um, but, but mostly it's going to be three days a week, okay? Um and so that's kind of the basic rundown of like what it's going to be like as you enter a soccer program here. In fifth and sixth grade, we are um, doing team formation uh, and same thing in seventh and eighth grade, but team formation, which takes two to three days that first week that we're together and the coaches are doing their best to split teams uh, in an equal way. OK, and then we enter the league and we compete. And so they're trying to analyze skills and abilities and who works well on teams, who's a good listener, who's not, who, you know, doesn't pay attention, kind of screws up the drills, can't have too many of those kids on the same team, right? So they're trying to figure out how do we split the, the kids up to get the most equal opportunity for everybody to get some time and also to have success, okay? And so team formation takes place the first week. After the first week, you will get an email from one of the coaches. So fifth and sixth grade will have three teams this year in soccer. Seventh and eighth grade will have two teams. So everybody will be placed on one of those teams. And then that coach will now become your main point of contact uh, going forward. Okay. Um, and so that person will be the person. I love you. And I, I love talking to you and meeting you. But you got to go to your coach with your questions because I can't field questions for the, you know, the 18 or 19 teams that we have in soccer and volleyball this fall, not to mention cross country and golf and all the other things we have going on. So make sure you're connecting with your coach. You should have gotten an email of a fifth and sixth grader from your coach. Uh, you will get one in the next day or two, okay? With information about next week, seventh and eighth grade, same thing. Coach Voss will be sending something out to you. So you probably haven't seen that yet, but it's coming, okay? Um, with coaches, all right. Our coach's job, something that I always tell them is super important, is that they communicate with you as thoroughly as possible. So what that means is that every Saturday you can expect an email through TeamSnap from your coach, kind of recapping last week, talking about what's coming up this week, 
and then ways that you can be involved or little reminders you need to have. It might be, hey, we didn't have enough water bottles. Make sure you bring a water bottle. It might be, hey, we're wearing black socks for our games. Everybody's got to have black, like little things like that. But they're going to talk to you every week on Saturday about the week coming up ahead of you. So you should expect that from your coach. Uh, on your Team Snap account, which you'll be invited to once your child is placed on one of the teams, you'll also have a schedule on there. The beauty of Team Snap is that um, you're going to get reminders every single day of that your child has a practice, a reminder of where it is and when it is. It's going to come right to your email. It's fantastic. So you'll always know. You can always go on Team Snap and click the schedule button and check what are my practices? When are the games? Like those schedules will be loaded into Team Snap and all you'll have to do is access them. Okay. So Team Snap is a great way for our coach to communicate. And uh, I'm working really hard to finalize all of those schedules right now with our league and with our practices so that when you are loaded onto Team Snap, you've got the whole season ready for you to go. Okay. And so that's that's a big part of being a coach. Um is just the way they communicate and keep you in tune. The other thing we tell coaches, just so that you know, is that we don't hang any banners uh, for middle school athletics. Okay, There's no state championships. There's no league championship banners, none of that stuff. But we want to win. Uh, but, but coaches need to understand that their number one job is, is not to win. Although you want to win, your number one job is to serve student athletes, teach them the game, be patient with them, help build on their strengths and become a team and to teach about and model how to be a Christ follower through all of that. That's the number one, two and three things that we want to try to do. And the fourth thing we want to try to do is win. But that is not the number one priority. We are trying to win all the time. Don't get me wrong. But it's not going to take a priority over those other fundamental things that are more important. So just so that you kind of understand where our coaches are coming from. So let's talk about working with coach, okay? Um, kids will not be perfect, believe it or not. The officials will not be perfect, believe it or not. Uh, and also coach will not be perfect. We can't put an expectation on them that if everybody else is allowed to be imperfect, the coach needs to be perfect. I coach varsity golf at our school. I do a really good job and I try really hard at it, but I mess stuff up every single year. Uh, and I'm and I'm pretty good at it, but I still mess it up, right? So we got to remember that as your kids are learning the game and our coaches are being patient with them, sometimes we have coaches that are experienced players that are learning to coach. We have coaches that have coached in pure play, but now they're learning to be competitive athletic coaches. We have coaches that have coached other sports and they're trying to figure out how to coach this one. We're also training coaches uh, as middle school level, Right. Uh, and so just remember that as we go in. And my goal for you, my hope for you is these couple of things. Number one, start with trust. Everyone deserves the benefit of the doubt. You want the benefit of the doubt for you and your child, and the coach deserves the same from us. So ask questions. Um, you know, you can ask for things. Please don't, don't go after a coach right away. Start with trust. They were hired because they want to serve you and serve your child. Uh, and that's what they're trying to do. They're also trying to do a million other things at the same time. And if you haven't been a coach, you don't know what it's like to be in the arena. It's tough in there. There's a lot going on, a lot of variables. So start with trust. Start with the benefit of the doubt. Um, ask questions instead of making statements. Um, you're only hearing second or third hand from your child uh, or from some other parent in the stands. And I just encourage you that there's a pretty good chance whatever you're hearing is not necessarily what's actually true. So ask questions of coach uh, and talk to them. Um, the other thing I like to talk about third is that you understand what a great experience is. We want a great experience for every kid. But I want to define that a little bit. Most people think a great experience is something where I get what I want, when I want it, how I want it, and we win. And that means everything was great. It was such a great year. We were 8-0 and, and my son played all the time and he got to do this. And that is not necessarily a great experience. I think all of us would agree that if we always got what we wanted, when we wanted it, we'd grow up to be pretty spoiled people. The greatest experiences in life often happen 
when there's challenge and difficulty, when there's failures that we have to overcome, when there's challenges we have to fight through to become something more or better. Um, most great experiences involve joy, sorrow, challenge, difficulty, failure, excitement, success, all of those things. That's a full experience. So I would consider that a great experience. And what I hope for you and your child is you get to experience all of those things because that's what gives you a great experience. I hope it's not we win every game and everything's easy and perfect because that wouldn't be a great experience. Number four, if people come to you about coach, um, I'm a big believer uh, that biblically we're asked to confront the person we have an issue with one-on-one. -on -one. And I think the Bible says if that person does not listen, then we bring someone else. And so if someone comes to you to talk about coach or, hey, did you can you believe coach this or can you believe this or that? We're already starting that conversation that doesn't help us solve a problem. So my encouragement to you is if someone comes to you about coach, just say to them, oh, yeah, I hear what you're saying. What did coach say when you asked them about that? Because without telling them what to do, you're just pointing them in the direction that they should go. And it's like, well, I didn't talk to coach. I said, maybe, maybe that'd be a good place to start. You know, provide some suggestions for people to keep our biblical community in the right track of how to handle things biblically that are challenging. Okay. And when you're going to approach coach, uh, every, every school, every, every coaching athletic department in the world has a 24 hour rule. Do you guys know why there's a 24 hour rule? Um, Two main reasons in my mind. Number one, I've coached a lot of things, and I know that right after something occurs, a game, whether it was good or bad or challenging or surprising, my brain's kind of messed up, and I'm thinking about a thousand things as a coach. And if you come to me with something like serious at that time, I'm not going to be my best, and you deserve my best. So the reason we have a 24-hour rule for coach is because coach needs time to decompress get their mind around how they're going to have this important conversation and then do a good job with it. The other reason we have a 24 hour rule is you need time. <laughs> you need time, right? You need to weigh a couple of things. Is this about me or is this actually about my kid? Is this something that really matters? I should wait 24 hours and decide. You all know when you sleep on something, you feel differently about it the next day. And so I'd encourage you to take that time. Third, whatever emotion you're in based on the game, just like the coach, you ain't going to be your best. I guarantee you that. All right. And so 24 hour rule, if you want to approach coach about something, I'd encourage you to email the coach a day after, after you've had time to sit in this and calm and all the things that you need to do and ask coach a question. Don't make statements like everybody's saying this and all the kids say, because we don't want to use those sorts of statements. We want to ask questions. Another thing I'm going to tell you is if it's about playing time or strategy, it's not a good choice to do that. Okay. Uh, it's just not a place we want to go. I don't want you in the habit as a fifth grade parent developing a habit that you have a say in Grand Rapids Christian Athletics on playing time and strategy, because it's just not, that's just not the case. As a parent, you have a chance to be a parent. As a coach, you have a chance to determine playing time and strategy. Those two lanes do not cross. Just making sure y'all heard that. <laughs> As a parent, you have a chance to be a parent. As a coach, you have a chance to determine playing time and strategy. Those two lanes do not cross unless that parent has been hired to be the coach. Most of you, if not all of you, 99.9% .9 of you, have not been hired to be the coach. So please make sure that you're, you're thinking about some of these things before you go to coach, okay? Um, so just wanna make sure we got those things set. Benefit of the doubt, ask questions. People come to you to gossip about coach, send them, send them to coach. You know, like what did coach say about that? Approach coach well, give them time, give her time. Um, and then remember that great experiences are all of these things, right? And a great experience for you is having to find a way to sit in some of that challenge yourself and let your kid's experience be your kid's experience, okay? 
so that's also a, a great part of the experience. As spectators, a couple of things for you. I don't think you're going to have to have any fees as a soccer parent. You shouldn't have a fee at any venue. Um, if you go to volleyball or something like that, there is a fee at each gym. Uh, it's $3 for adults. Kids are free and grandparents are $2 each. So just so you kind of have an idea going into middle school athletics, if you're in a gym, uh, there's usually a fee. If you're at a track meet, there's usually a fee. Other than that, there isn't a fee to enter and watch your child play. The reason we have a fee for the league is so that we can, number one, pay for the people that are helping us run the event. Number two, helps us fundraise. I never ask you for any money ever, right? I don't ask for fundraising. I don't ask your kid to sell cards. I don't ask you to talk to your, you know, send out a link or a GoFundMe thing. When you go watch your child play, that money goes to me so that I can be a steward of the money and 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 buy equipment, buy uniforms. We have some of the best equipment, some of the best uniforms in our league. Uh, and that's because we do a good job with the money that we get from you just watching and, and uh, um, cheering on your child. So when you pay that $3, just know that is going to the right place for the right reasons. And that's my one of my big parts of my job is to make sure that money gets used well to build our program. Um, when you're at the games, the last thing about officiating is, you know, uh, we don't always get, you know, FIFA level officials at the middle school league. Okay. Um, we got officials that are learning how to officiate. You've got college kids learning how to blow the whistle, how to call it the right way. They're usually paired with an older, more experienced official who's letting them, you know, experience the ropes. Like this is a learning ground. We're at an extreme official shortage and we need our middle school families, despite what the other schools do about cheering against officials, we need our school to be different. My my dream is that every official says, I'm so glad I got a Grand Rapids Christian game because those parents are so great. Those coaches are so great. You know, they they come to our place and they feel they feel loved. It feels different than youth sports to them. It encourages them. You know, thank them for being the official. Even if they're terrible, just thank them so that we had a game. You know, like those are things where our Christian community can put God on display in a positive way by how we interact with our officials, the people that visit us, uh, the coaches. Um, we can just do a great job putting Christ on display in a positive way. So be neutral or be encouraging. Um, if you don't have something good to say, as my mom always used to tell me, don't say anything at all, okay? Uh, but try to be neutral or encouraging. And then most importantly, mom and dad, have fun. It's fun to be a fan. It's not fun to try to fight the coach for something. It's not fun to go against the official and argue with the official. It, those things aren't fun. They feel like something you need to do, but you don't. Have fun. When you're having fun, there's a better chance that people around you are having fun. And we're also nearing, you know, we're, we're getting into middle school here. Some of you, this is the last soccer team your child's going to be on. You want to be able to look back and say, that was so much fun. I had such a good time meeting parents. I had such a good time cheering on kids and watching this great player help other players, maybe that weren't as good, be, be better. But enjoy the moments because they don't last forever and just enjoy it and have fun. Um, enjoy those car rides home by just saying, I loved watching you play. It was so fun for me to be here watching you play. Um, and so I just want to encourage you to enjoy these experiences um, because they do not last forever. And I'm well aware as my son gets older that his days as a, you know, wearing a uniform for our school, they get shorter every single day. And I just want to make sure that I'm loving those moments. So hopefully you will too. Uh, if there's any questions, um, I'm going to check through the chat here. But if you have a question that you want to ask, you can unmute yourself and ask it. Uh, so I'm just going to search through here. Um, seventh and eighth grade teams are four days a week. Yes, Betsy, sorry about that. Four days a week for seventh and eighth grade. So two games, two practices, one game, three practices-ish uh, in, that, in that realm, uh, but no more than four. Uh, sometimes we do play some soccer on Saturdays, but usually not. Almost all our soccer is between Monday and Thursday now, which is great. Um, coaching this season, uh, we have um, in fifth and sixth grade, we have Kent Vinvels, who's been a longtime coach um, in the GR Parks Department. Uh, he's going to be helping us out this year. Uh, we have Kurt Sun, who is a player and coach 
in a lot of different areas at a lot of different levels. He works locally now. It's his first year with us, but not his first year to coaching. Uh, very experienced, very exciting guy. And we have Matt Jen, uh, who is uh, a parent, uh, has a ton of experience coaching uh, youth soccer, is an educator at Godwin Heights, uh, and we're excited to have him be our third, fifth, and sixth grade coach this year. Uh, so we're really excited about those three coaches. Seventh and eighth grade is Jim and Lizzie Boss. Uh, Jim has been probably the most experienced coach in middle school history of the world. And uh, if you ever get to have Jim as the coach, you're going to be really excited about that. He's the reason I went into athletics. He's the reason I became a teacher. Um, and he's still doing a phenomenal job. And his daughter, Lizzie, is learning the game, and she's become a fantastic coach herself. She coaches three seasons for us every year. So her learning curve of experience has shot up so fast. And this is her third year coaching our boys soccer with Jim. Uh, and probably this will be her seventh season overall coaching at Grand Rapids Christian. So we're really excited to have to have her as well. So um, where are the practices? Fifth and sixth grade practices are always going to be at uh, Grand Rapids Christian Middle School on that backfield that we have. Um, and uh, the seventh and eighth grade practices, they walk after school to their practices over at Evergreen, the game field for everyone. That's where seventh and eighth grade practices. Fifth and sixth grade teams practice here on campus. And I believe most of the teams this year, because of our coaches' jobs, a uh, handful of them will be at five o'clock. And I think there's one of the coaches who can do some after school times. Um, so, um, Yes. The other thing I wanted to talk about um, is that kids that are in club uh, communicate that to, you know, respond to the initial email from Matt Jen this week and tell them if you know your club schedule, we need to know that as soon as possible because that could help us with team formation, uh, making sure we don't have too many conflicts. When it comes to like sharing club and middle school, what's super important to us is that if you play on a club team and you have a game, and we have a practice, uh, we want you to go to the club game, okay? If we have a game and club has a practice, we'd really like for you to come to our game. Now, if you both have a game or you both have a practice, those rare times where we have these conflicts, we wanna try to split those, if at all possible. So if you look at the schedule and you see the practices and our games and you compare that to your club schedule and see there's, you know, um, two, two times out of six conflicts that are game for one practice for the other. That's fine. Go to the game. Let the coach know if there's four times where it's like, you know, both have practice or both have games. We want to split those so that two times are with us and two times are with them. So that's kind of how we want to split it. We don't ever want to make you choose. We don't want to penalize you. We just want it to be a shared process. We don't have rules for how many you can miss. We just want to share the process, okay? Um, if, if that process gets abused, uh, it certainly be something that I'd want to get involved in and talk to you about it. But hopefully you can just work that with the coach and share the process, okay? Other questions that people might have? Okay, well, we are out of here in less than 30 minutes. We got a lot done. If you have any other questions, you can stay on. My next meeting is with volleyball, but I believe it's at 7.15. So I do have some time for anybody that would like to keep uh, discussing something about soccer. So thank you so much. We'll see you out there. You should get an email from your coach in the next two days before the weekend, lining you up with all the info you need for next week. I hope you have fun and uh, we look forward to it. Also, oh, last thing. Once you're on a team, you're on a team. Like there's not a choice of like, oh, I don't like my team. I'm not going to play. Like that doesn't happen. We can't run a program that way. So please make sure that you understand that as well. Thank you so much. Have a great night. And uh, we will we'll see you around.